Hi, my name is Buddy Tigner and I'll be your instructor for this course. I grew up on a tobacco farm in Virginia. You can see the location of Chesterfield County. It's denoted by the red star there. Uh, it's a unique county in that you can grow several kinds of tobacco there. And now, of course, it's mostly a suburban area for Richmond, Virginia. But that's where I got my start. Once I graduated high school, I attended Virginia Tech. I got an undergraduate degree in horticultural sciences. Uh, a lot of my love for plants, I believe, stems from the time I spent on the farm in my youth. Uh, I went on there to get a master's degree. My master's degree was also in horticultural science, but I began to specialize in the way plants respond to extreme environments. I worked on cell wall changes that are associated with cold hardiness and uh, increases in freeze tolerance. And also in 1990, uh, when I started my master's degree, that was when I first began teaching and absolutely fell in love with teaching. Uh, I taught the dendrology lab to landscape architecture students there. So I taught them how to identify uh, plants in the landscape. After I did completed my master's degree, at Virginia Tech. I attended the University of Florida where I earned a PhD in horticultural sciences, but the program there was very multidisciplinary. So on my committee I had a molecular biologist, I had a traditional plant breeder, I had a geneticist, I had a plant physiologist, and I had a horticulturalist. Uh, and again I was working on um, molecular and uh, organ level changes in plants as they related to freeze hardiness, specifically citrus in that case. But I also did a lot of field work, or was out in the field looking at irrigation and fertilization regi regimes. So I, I really appreciated my time at the University of Florida because my particular committee allowed me to, instead of just focusing on a single individual area, which often happens, it was a very cross-disciplinary approach to studying physiological changes in plants as they adapted to freeze hardiness. And one of the first things that I hope all my students do, regardless of the class I'm teaching, is think about the goal they have in mind for the end of the course. Now in our syllabus, we'll cover the objectives for this course, and we'll always try to tie all our work back to those learning objectives. And you may be a point in your career where you're thinking about what your long-term objectives are. I'd be happy to chat with you about those, or of course you can consult your advisor. But remember, you can't really get there if you don't have a goal, if you don't have a place you want to get to, you don't have um, new heights you want to reach. So, so keep those things in mind as well. So after I finished my doctorate degree, I actually did a postdoc at the University of Florida for a year in the School of Forest Resources and Conservation, and then I moved to Fort Pierce, Florida, and worked at the Indian River Research and Education Center, where I was an assistant professor at the University of Florida. So it's 50% teaching and 50% research there. Loved it. Lived on South Hutchison Island. Uh, sometimes I think I was crazy for ever leaving Florida, but it's been a great adventure so far. Also, you know, I like to be outside. Um, I prefer to be outside. And of course here, if you'll notice the date on this picture, this was on a return visit to Florida. But this was December 28th, and I'm out on my paddleboard, and it's sunny, and it's warm. Um, absolutely love, love warm weather. After I left Florida, I went next to the University of Vermont. This is a view from the edge of campus looking out towards the Green Mountains. There I was a faculty member in the Plant and Soil Science Department working with local farmers on sustainable growing techniques as well as teaching a variety of plant science classes. Now after I left Vermont, um, I went to Haywood Community College, which is where I'm at currently. It's a beautiful little community college, only about, it's in North Carolina, but we're only about 24 miles from Tennessee. So we are in the very west part of the state. Uh, the college is celebrating its uh, 50th anniversary in 2015. 
They have a, a unique collection of programs, including you know, transfer degrees for students going on to four-year schools, but they have professional crafts, they have natural resources, and the landscape is an arboretum with over 380 species of trees on campus. It was designed by a landscape architect. Uh, we're relatively unique uh, as far as community college campuses go that it was designed to appear as it was always part of the landscape. So if you're ever in our neck of the woods, you should definitely come by for a visit. So in North Carolina, again, here I am outside. Uh, you'll see that, I, again, I spend a lot of time outside. I love plants, but that doesn't mean I don't like animals. This is not my horse. Um, I don't have any. I'd love to at some point in the future. This was a horse in the neighborhood, though, that just, for whatever reason, bonded with me. I would go for runs and would run by this horse's um, fenced-in area. It would actually run alongside me for the whole time I was there, and I could walk up to it, and it would essentially, you know, horses can't hug you, but this one did everything but. Uh, wonderful, wonderful animal. North Carolina is also home to an extreme amount of diversity in the plant world. We get warm, moist air coming in from the Gulf, and we get cold air from the North. So we have a large number of plant species in the landscape here that kind of cross both of those types of um, ecosystems. Uh, this is out in Sali Recreation Area. Uh, there, there I am with Ava's my fiance, and uh, just the mountain biking here is, is fantastic. And again, great time to get out in the world, look at biology firsthand. So let's talk a little bit about my philosophy on learning. This is my son Seamus. Since the time he was little, I'd throw him on the front of my paddleboard with a life jacket, of course. He'd ask to climb up on my mountain bike. He was game to just run into the ocean as soon as he could walk and run. And this is one thing I've noticed with many of my students. If they approach learning with a childlike attitude, and excitement, they are almost always successful. So that's my hope for you, is that you approach this course with excitement and curiosity. Science is a journey and you need to be prepared. You might have to take some data. Here Seamus is uh, comparing his wingspan to a vulture's wingspan. You might have to look a little silly time to time to be safe in the lab, but you're gonna to get to do some really cool stuff. You're gonna to get to do some experiments that are gonna take your learning to the next level. You might get to do some really exciting stuff. Could be a little bit scary before any of you panic. Um, that is not a real alligator. When I posted this on Facebook, <laughs> I had several people <laughs> posting in the comments, please tell me that's not real. Um, but again, Seamus is always a good sport in taking pictures. And then after the hard work is done, you know, we like to work hard and then we like to play hard. And you're going to get to choose whatever kind of reward you like. Uh, think about working hard on these courses, mastering the material, and then be able to sit back and say, I did that. I was successful. I completed this class. I'm, I've mastered the competencies of the course and I'm ready to move on and learn more. And whatever your goals are in life, you know, I again encourage you to work hard and play hard. Here, uh, Ava's, this is a picture of Ava. We were out in Moab mountain biking. Sometimes you get to do things that are really unexpected. If you're willing to open your eyes, sometimes everyday sort of adventures can turn into something that you hadn't thought they would. So this is on uh, Bon Air in the Caribbean. And while I was there, I, I always enjoy horses, so I, I went down and paid to have a horse for the day and rode with a group of folks. And uh, you'll see there's no saddle here. We took the saddles off and we got to the beach. So these horses, uh, many of them were born and raised on the island there. And as we went through the center of the island, it was kind of a deserty type situation. The horses did what they were supposed to do and listened well. Um, they were all former uh, Spanish racehorses, so whenever one would start to run, they'd all pick up and run. But this horse was called Indy, and when I got to the uh, to the ocean there, 
Uh, he just started to snort and whinny and, and, in excitement. And um, the folks that I had rented the horse from, one of them was along on the ride, and they said, well, he loves to swim. He wants to swim. Would you like to swim with the horse? And so we took the saddle off. And I had never done this before. I'd ridden horses plenty of times before, but I never got in the water with one like this. And I said, swim, you know, we're not talking about a stream crossing, but the animal would actually swim. And it's, and you know, anyway, it was the most amazing experience ever. So this horse waded into the water and you could feel the horse walking on the sand. And then when the water got deep, he just started to swim. And it was, you know, one of those moments you're in when you realize this may never happen again. And it was just an amazing experience. Um, now, I was like, you know, controls are a little bit different when you're swimming with a horse and riding. You pretty much let them do what they need to do. Uh, but this horse absolutely loved it. It was as much a treat for the horse as me. And again, get out there get out in the world and whether it's your local neighborhood or you're fortunate enough to get to travel do things and do those unexpected things and Ava's is always a sport you know it, we went out at night on these paddle boards uh, in an estuary really neat um, a whole different set of wildlife is active at night um, in fact, it's, it was pretty scary at one point. A dolphin was out there kind of strand feeding. And it, when you're out there in the dark and you can't see anything but the stars and the black water and a large animal starts thrashing around behind you, it'll, it'll give you goosebumps. So as I've mentioned throughout this presentation, plants were something that I've always been very excited about plant life, types of plants, plants' responses to the environment. And that's what's driven me to continue learning my whole life. And what I hope you will all do is find what drives you. What is that area of focus that really excites you? Because if you figure out what this is, if you figure out where your passion lies in learning, studying will be easy. Work will never seem like work. It will be something that you're excited to go to every day. And that's really what I hope for all of you as you continue on your educational journey. Find what ignites your passion and follow it.